right. Coach, seven days in, just uh, what do you thought about your defensive line group through these first few practices and what are you looking forward to in the scrimmage tomorrow? Yeah, I think they've done a really good job. I mean, they're competing hard. Um, they're holding each other accountable. Um, the expectations in the room are high. Um, and and even with the guys that are coming back, I mean, they're they're really putting a lot of pressure on the young guys to learn things and, and kind of develop and come along. So it's been good. And tomorrow, I'm just, you know, I, I want to sit back and let them play, see what we are, see what we have to do. We've got a lot of work to do. But I want to see where we are at this point tomorrow. Um, and I think, like I said, they've done a great job up to this point, though. Is Eric Gregory the most undervalued guy on this team? Doesn't seem like he gets a lot of headlines or all SEC recognition stuff. Started 12 games for you last year, six years. Yeah, you know, he's so he's so valuable because he does so much. Um, I mean, he can play both inside position. He can play outside. I mean, he's done. he did that early in his career. And I, I, I kind of agree with you. He's very, very underrated. Um, but, I, you know, he, he does a really, really good job. He's such a humble kid. That stuff doesn't bother him. He doesn't think about it. He doesn't ask questions about it. It's, it's not even an issue with him. He just shows up and he works every day. Coach, uh, mm -hmm. two kids I wanted to ask you about Quincy Rhodes and Kiwi Rhodes. How how are they coming along? Or are they developing yeah. like you want to? Yeah, yeah, Kiwi. He's doing a, a really good job. I mean, he's jailed with the room great. You know, a lot of times when you bring transfers in, you don't really know. You kind of try and pick the best kids that kind of can can um, gel with your team and your room and all that, and and you don't know how it's going to end up. Um, but Kiwi, man, it's such a great relationship with the guys in the room, um, and he's developing a lot like I thought he would. Um, and I have no issue with at any point if Kiwi had to jump in and be a starter, and he's pushing. Um, you know, he, he plays hard, so and he does a lot of really good things. So I'm I'm excited by him. I mean, Quincy's just a kid that's really growing up, still a kid that doesn't realize his ability and his, you know, he's such a big kid, a six, seven, whatever, and almost two hundred and eighty-five pounds. He's still such a he's still a baby. Um, and he's growing up and, and he's learning the system. He's learning football. And as he learns football, he's becoming a better player. But I, I you know, I'm high on him, and I'm high on I'm high on the room. I think they've done a good job. I know sisters still like to talk about injury. I'm not asking about an injury, but right. is Anton in a position where he can get back pretty quick and play? Yeah, he's going to be fine. Yeah, he, he'll, he'll be fine. He's a tough kid, come from a tough program, tough family, great family. He's going to be fine. The, the buck position, I'm wondering, like, uh, when does that come into play most yeah. often? What kind of offensive sets and – what have you seen from uh, how it might benefit you guys? Well, I, I don't know if the position itself, just say you tie it into what offensive guys are doing, is more so a scheme. We play with that guy on the field in multiple. We have the ability to play with different personnel. We have the ability to play with the same guys on the field. And I think that's the good part about what we do and how we do things. Um, and so it, it really is just a position within the defense that could be manipulated however we wanted to do it. And um, it, it really boils down to what we're getting ready to get that week, how much we want to run certain things and all that. But um, I, I, that position and those guys that are playing that right now, play, uh, they play well. Sam has made no bones about how he felt like the team had to be tougher, that you had to do more tackling and all that. Right. That would apply to D-tackles as much as any position on the team. Oh, yeah. Physical. How's your group? you know, taking to the more physicality that you're going to have in camp? Well, I, I mean, we've been fine because, I mean, I, you know, I, I think, and there's no doubt about it, that the game is won in the trenches. And so I demand that of my guys up front all the time anyway. Um, and and tackling is a big part of what we do in, in a lot of ways because, you know, you look back to last season, we left some things on, we left a lot of plays on the field. We left some sacks on the field. And uh, if we can make those plays this year, it'll make a difference in a lot of, a lot, in a lot of games. Two freshmen, Charlie Collins and KV on Henderson, just what have you liked about them so far? And what, where do you feel like they are from when they came in? I mean, they're workers. That, that's the biggest thing that stands out right now. You, you, you know, when you get a, a young kid, a freshman that comes in, you, a lot of times they want to shy away and jump to the back of the line and let the older guys kind of take over. These two kids, man, they jump in the front of the line and they get in the middle of the older guys and and they are they they're workers. They really work hard and uh, they have a lot of development to come along. They got to get stronger, obviously, put on more weight, all that that stuff that's got to happen, but. The the hunger the hunger to play the game and learn the system and be in the midst and and not be shy being around older guys no nah, they 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 just one of the guys right now. 
going back to Anton, I know he's been out the last few days, but just when he does return, what do you hope to see from him? What do you need to see from him to give you confidence for him to, to well, have a good season? Continuing to grow. I mean, he had a, a really good spring. Um, a lot of things that, you know, when he got here that he had uh, not been taught or not been exposed to, and he was learning. He, as the spring went on, he got later in the spring. He understood what we were doing, and and he started. You can see his 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 uh, growth started to really take off. And I think we really want to get back to when get back to that point, continue to grow, because he he'll be a big part of uh, of our success. Talk specifics, but you've been on a pretty good roll recruiting wise, yeah. and you also brought in you know Kavion and, and Charlie in this mm -hmm. past class. Just what's the key to recruiting at such a high level when? You know, there's a lot of outside noise about, you know, the hot seat with Coach Pittman and things like that. Just what's the key to, to still be able to recruit like that? Just being yourself. I mean, you know, I kind of went through this process and I talked to parents about it. I went through this process with my own son. And and just, uh, you know, I sat in rooms where I listened to coaches talk to my own kid. And I'm like, oh, no, that's not real right there. And it's about being real and being honest with the kids and, 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 and being honest in the whole situation, we understand what we are as a program. We understand what we have to do. So nothing any other university tell a kid is they won't tell them anything that I haven't already told them. And so just being straight up with them and being honest and tell them where we are and um, and and being somewhere, being the, who the parents want to drop their kid off with. And and it's just been uh, fun. It's been a great group of kids. <clears throat> Getting back to Eric for a minute, mm -hmm. how big was it to get him back for sixth year? And, you know, six year guys are getting a little more common, but it's it's almost unheard of that a guy stays at one yeah. school for six years. What do you think yeah. about him being here all that time and just as a sixth year guy? It's been it's been great. I love having him back. I want him back. And, uh, you know, it's, it's it's kind of a joke in the room. You know, Coach Pitt might bring up when he first got here and things like that. Yeah, he asked guys to raise their hand who was here when we first got here and all that. And he might be one of maybe two or three that's in the room that it was actually here when he first got here. So, I mean, but Eric is such a mature kid. And um, he's very, very quiet. Doesn't say a whole lot. He just works. And so, it's, it's man, it's great to have him back. You say he's underrated, and I agree. What, what is it? What is it he does specifically that, that makes him so valuable to you guys? Everything. I mean, he, he brings a lot of maturity to the room. Um, you know, when there's time to open his mouth and 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 take control of the room, he does that. Um, understanding every position up front, he knows that. He plays at a high level. Plays physical. I mean, he, he just everything that he brings to the table uh, has been great for us in our room. What are what are some of the strengths of, of Nico's game? Like, is he a guy that you know third and long? He can be a part of that pass rush group. That's kind of maybe you get three, four defensive ends there yeah. on the field. Well, Nico's played well. You know, Nico got here. Um, Nico and I were coming in at the same time, and at that time, you know, Nico walked in, and and you know, he he was a great player. Um, been around a really good program, and then you know, I think he thought that. That he was just going to kind of fall into the mold of things. He realized he had to work at it. Didn't play as much his first year. Played a little bit more last year. The light came on this spring, and he's playing at a high level right now. So I'm really pleased with where he is, and he does a lot of good things for us. He plays physical, and he's playing fast right now. Landon spoke a lot at SEC Media Days yeah. about needing to be more consistent. You know, mm -hmm. he had the Alabama game, but he wants to translate that. What right. can, like, how specifically as a coach can you kind of get that out of him? Is there anything that he can do better to to have that performance across the entire season? Well, just requiring him to do all the little things. He's such a hard worker. When you turn the film on, you just see how hard he plays and how physical he plays. But being consistent in all the little things that comes with being a defensive lineman. Um, you know, it, he he's such a great, uh, player, he studies a lot. He knows a lot. He's very smart. Understands the game, but the little things of, of of taking the right steps and being in the right place at the right time, putting your eyes or transitioning your eyes to where they're supposed to be, and all the little things, I think, will uh, elevate his game to another level. Um, what's the what's like the minimum number of defensive tackles you'd like to have like ready to go? And and can Danny Sawyer can he get yeah. in that rotation? Your impressions on him too. Well, I don't know if there's a a certain number um, because I'm a play who's ready to play. I, I think it's really hard in this league to to ask a guy out to go out and play 60, 70 snaps a game at the level you want them to play. Um, you know, we have a room full of guys right now. I say a room full of guys. We have a good number of guys, probably five guys right now that we feel comfortable with. 
Um, Danny's got a lot of growing still to do. Um, you know, he, he transferred in from another university, and but he was only there with them a semester. So it, it, it wasn't like he really got into the college mold because he was just coming out of uh, junior college at that point. So he still got a lot of growing to do, and he's doing a good job. And, and um, you know, we're just expecting to continue to get better. Is he in that five, or are you talking about Caleb well, maybe? I, I mean, he, he's, he's in the mix of all of it, all of them. And I say five right now, but it, it could be any. Because my philosophy is this, you know, if you make us better when you're on the field, you're going to play. I don't care if you're a senior. I don't care if you're a freshman. That's, that's, the, way I, that's the way I talk about the room. Um, and you talk about the freshmen, yeah, they both gained some good weight in the offseason yep. and stuff, but um, are they physically ready at least? Not ready, but where you want them, but like to go out and help you guys, like be in the – Well, it's the still early. Yeah, it's still early right now. You don't, you don't really know. I mean, I, I know they're getting better daily. So – and I know playing in this conference is, is tough. And so, I mean, we're only in practice, what, six? I already lost track of days, but we're only in practice six. So, still got a long way to go. We'll see. They're getting better, though. You know, Cam's a guy that really seemed to come on strong. Cam Ball really seemed mm -hmm. to come on strong last year. He's a fourth-year guy, I think. What 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 are you seeing from him? Kind of what what are your expectations for this year? Well, the same as Landon. He's playing at a high level right now. He he really really played well this spring. He did a great job this spring. He understands what to do. He's understanding leverage and 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 all different type of uh, things up front. So I'm really expecting him to take the next step. Um, and and become a guy that that's dependable every play. Um, last year he played a lot and he played well, but he could have. There's things where he could have done that have been a lot better. And Cam and I talk about this all the time. So um, he will be a a really good player for us, and I'm excited about him. Like I said, just like I am about the room. What kind of things specifically can he do better? Is it just more about being consistent or well? Playing with better pad level, which he's gotten better at that. Um, understand leverage on 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 when I can counter, when I can do certain things against pass rush, and then and then even just keeping my eyes in the right spot. And we talk about that a lot in our room because that that that's uh, that is a big part of of uh, who you become and how physical you are and and being able to take chances when you can. And he's still big, but he's maybe not quite as big. But you know, it seemed like he when he got in last year, he did a pretty good job. You know, yeah. Um, against those offensive linemen, I'm sure they didn't enjoy it too much. Yeah. Um, what, what what are you seeing from him, and what how, what kind of improvement can he make? He's I mean, he's a big kid. He's the biggest one in the room. Um, you know, but he's still a baby in the sense, just like Quincy Rose. There's a lot of growth that had, that needs to be had, and and he's getting better every day. Um, he's being more physical, and I think part of truly understanding what we're asking in the scheme will allow him to play faster. And he's getting to that point. Um, but you know, there's always there's learning all the time, and like I say, he, he, he's continuing to get better. Uh, Landon's decision to come back was a, a big deal. Right. Uh, what what did that mean to you personally? And then uh, if you can go from there to talk about just all the uh, experience you got yeah. coming back in your room, what did that do for you as a coach? Well, it, it was huge for me because, you know, he and I sat down and had a conversation and he had some goals in mind and his family had goals in mind. And, and I think, that he wanted to come back to reach some of those goals at this level and even moving on to the next level. And, um, you know, he, he's such a really good kid. And, and, and uh, you know, I say a kid, a young man, you know, he's married and all that. And so, um, you know, he, he's done a really good job. So I'm expecting a lot from him, and it meant a lot to me for him to come back. Um, and, and so he just knows he has things he want to get done. And that, that was a big part of it. And and then just experience in the room. You know, we've got we've got guys in the room and the Landon Jackson, the Kiwi Rose, the Eric Gregory, all those guys. There's a lot of experience between those guys. Um, but we really need the younger guys to step up and come on and develop. Um, but the experience means a lot, you know, because now I could spend a lot more time with the younger guys trying to bring them along faster than uh, than it would if we didn't have all that experience. You talked about looking for versatility out of the buck role what, what do you what do you mean by that what are you looking what's the kind of player that you're looking for and who all's been working at that spot well we have we well we're looking for a kid that has the ability to rush the quarterback that also has the ability to drop in coverage um and it's just a more of an outside linebacker type mindset but 
the same type of ability, like I said, they can put their hand on the ground, line up on a tight end, and play in this league. Uh, we've had multiple guys work at it. Um, Nico's worked at it. Um, Brad Spence has worked at it. Um, we're training some of the younger guys, depth to depth wise. So it's just different right now. And like I said, they're all pushing each other right now. You refer to it as a buck and not as like a Sam linebacker. Or... No, not really. It's more like an outside linebacker, but it could be. I mean, the two guys that are doing it are athletic enough to be able to do it, but that's not the way we see it right now. We've um, done this whole press conference. We haven't said Cam Ball's name, so yeah, Cam, Cam Ball's ceiling. Yeah. He did. Oh, he did. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I overlooked it. <laughs> Sometimes he ran. I don't know. <laughs> no, but Cam, Cam's had man. He's had a really good camp. He had a phenomenal spring, and like I said, he. I mean, he's just such a great kid. Like I said, my. I, 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 you know, I can say that about my whole room. Yeah, every one of those kids are such great kids, and they want to get better. They want to learn. They want to get coached, and they are right now. And I'm going to tell you right now, with the changing of the rule, that allowing uh, quality control guys and really GAs to really get in and coach, I've got two guys in my room right now, and Kelvin Green and, and uh, Tyrone Hopper, who played for me in another school. I mean, they're doing a phenomenal job with those kids, and it allows – I trust them enough to be able to do – we can split groups up and do things, and we can get more detail on a lot of things. So it's been really good for us. You mentioned Kiwi a minute ago. He's mm -hmm. pushing for. I, I think he started a couple of times. I think he played in all the games. Yeah. Um, and he's a sixth year guy. Right. So you got two six year guys. That's probably a nice nice luxury. But right. um, the second year from La Tech, you know, he's had a whole SEC season under his belt. Kind of. Yep. What, what 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 kind of even as old as he is, what kind of uh, improvement can he make? Well, just, you know, he understands the game and everything is what um, what happened. I think some of the different techniques and things we were asking or, 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 or teaching were a little bit different from what he's done. But, I mean, Kiwi's an experienced player. He does a great job, and, he, and he's physical. He plays hard. And so, I have, I mean, I, I no question at all about having him in the game. I might have my timeline mixed up. I think you and Landon got here at the same time. Yeah. Uh, just when he got here and you first saw him, did you – have any idea that this was possible for him, kind of the season he had last year and what could come this year? Or has he maybe even surprised you a little bit? I didn't, to be honest with you, because my biggest question is when I first got here, because he was just coming off of uh, off an injury. And uh, my biggest question was how physical he's going to be, because I had never seen him play. And, you know, here's this big kid that's long. He's, is he going to play physical? And that question was answered like immediately when he got on the field. There's no doubt about it. And the progress he's made from the time he walked in the door to now, I mean, it's been great. And and it's just getting better and better every every day we go out. How do you think Land Landon's been handling maybe these heightened expectations this year? And have you had any conversations with him in the entire room about, hey, you might see a little bit more double teams this year. This is how we're going to maybe adjust right. to that. Well, we talk about it all the time because I was fortunate enough to coach another player um, that just happened to be he, – he was pretty good too, that uh, it was double and tripled and all that stuff after, um, uh, you know, he had a major hit in a bowl game at, and, and all of a sudden he became this guy that, that nobody could block. But I, I, we talked about how they, hey, things are going to be different for you. But all this, the, this uh, publicity and all that stuff he's getting right now is not – it's not going to him, and, and I don't go into his head or anything, and I don't allow it in, for those guys anyway because I'm, I'm quick to tell them. You know, those same guys that lift you up are the same guys that are going, you know what, they're going to they gonna, they gonna do cut you down or whatever when you're not playing the way they think you are. So don't listen to all that stuff. Just play. Coach, appreciate you. Yep. Well, yeah.